Hi there, I'm Marin Wilbur from Chan Heston Library, and I'm going to talk to you about a book that I think would be great for getting your mind off our long Minnesota winter. It is appropriately titled Beach Read by Emily Henry, and it is a romantic comedy. It's uh, not heavy reading at all, but it, it's, it's fun, and it's a good romantic comedy. Comedy. I think it uh, pairs these two characters together really well, and and the way that uh, relationship develops is interesting. So the two main characters are January Andrews and Augustus Everett. Um, they were rivals in school together um, with their writing careers, and what are the chances that they both end up in the same small town in the Upper Peninsula in Beachcott? cottages right next door to each other. It turns out they're both struggling with writer's block. She writes romantic comedies and he writes dark literary fiction. They both have um, mistrust of what the other person writes and they um, are talk about their writing and if you think it's like they do an exchange where if you think it's so simple to write romantic comedy, give it a go. And same with him. You, you know, I challenge you to write literary fiction. So because they're fighting writer's block, they decide to do a switch. And she's going to write his um, literary fiction novel, and he is going to take a try at writing her romantic comedy and they're doing research together to see what the other person's process is like and how they do that. So through the research, as you can imagine, the relationship develops and it's a great fun story to take you away on a beach read by Emily Henry. Thank you. Good morning, winter readers. My name is Kathy Pershman, and I'm a retired librarian from the Chen Hassan Library. This winter, I'm going to be reading books set in hot climates, I think. This first one I'm recommending is called Peachy Scream by author Anna Gerard. She's also, also the author of Peach Clobber, the first book on the series. It is August in Peachy Scream. It's very hot in the small town of Cymbeline. B&B owner, Nina Fleet, has bought a beautiful Queen Anne mansion that she's renovated and is renting out as a B&B. &B. And for two weeks this August, she happens to, to get as guests a Shakespearean, amateur Shakespearean troupe that will be staging a play in the main square of her town during their annual Shakespeare festival. Who's the director of this troupe? None other than her favorite nemesis, handsome actor Harry Westcott. He thinks that his aunt, his great aunt, should have left the mansion to him when she died, but she didn't, and Nina was able to buy it. He's been nagging her about this for quite a while. He keeps threatening lawsuits. The actor playing Hamlet, businessman Len Marsh, is found dead in the garden on their first morning after drinking one of Nina's peach mimosas. However, when they find the glass, there is some residue in it. There's some question. Is it a natural death? The police don't seem interested in investigating, but Nina knows that everyone in the troop really disliked him. In fact, hated him, including his trophy wife, Susie. So Nina and Harry decide to investigate on their own. There are a series of pranks. Are they dangerous pranks? Nobody's died yet, but people have been sick. Everyone wonders what's going on. So Nina and Harry have to work hard to solve the crime before someone else dies. Hi, this is Kathy Pershman from the Tannhausen Library, a retired librarian. My choice for a possible beach read 
if we could ever go to a beach again, is The Best of Me by David Sedaris. There's two regular copies of this book with 15 holds, one e-book and one e-audiobook. It may take you well to get it, but it's worth the wait. Not many of us could actually go to a beach this winter, but if we could, this would be a perfect read. You will be chuckling, howling with laughter, and getting teary-eyed from this collection of stories. These are indeed Sodaris's best. His comments on society, on his kooky siblings, his flawed parents, his childhood, and his current life with his husband, Hugh. All of these stories are wonderfully entertaining. You will really enjoy it. Hi, Bridget from Carver County Libraries talking today about our readers advisory videos about beach reads. Um, number one I want to talk about today is of course Ellen Hildebrand who by her covers of her books obviously knows a thing or two about beach reads. Currently our lucky day travels in paradise. This copy has about 27 holes on it but if you want to start from the beginning we also have the 2018 of Winter in Paradise, which is the first book of the series. What Happens in Paradise, second book of the series. And then it will be Maybe Your Lucky Day, or we have lots of other copies in the system for Troubles in Paradise. Ellen Hendebrandt obviously knows how to spin a tale, intertwining many lives, many struggles, many loves. Will this be the last one of the series? The ending didn't really tell us, so... Check it out if you want something that involves a lot of lives, a lot of loves, a lot of laugh, a little bit of hurt. Next, I want to talk about Kelvin and Hobbes. It is the 25th anniversary of Kelvin and Hobbes, which was a comic strip from 1985 to 1995. Bill Watterson wrote it with a Sunday comment and then compiled it into books later on in his life. One reason I want to talk about Kelvin and Hobbes as a beach read is because they're comic strips. So you can read a little bit here and a little bit there. They give you a good laugh, a good smile, and then you can put them down until the next time you need a dose of Kelvin and Hobbes. One thing that I find really interesting about the Kelvin and Hobbes um, books and franchise is that for all of his time that he wrote those books, they wanted him to merchandise Hobbes. They wanted to make a stuffed Hobbes which is a tiger, but he wouldn't let anybody merchandise him, t-shirts or anything, because he wanted to keep the idea of Hobbes magical. Is he a stuffed animal, or is he really a real tiger? For my last beach read, I have been a avid follower of Janet Ivanovich. This is her 27th book in the series that starts with One for Your Money. It also has a movie different opinions. There wasn't two movies, so that might say something. <laughs> but with Fortune and Glory, number 27, same characters. You got Grandma Mozart, you got Lula, you got all these great funny characters that make you laugh and smile. And Stephanie, who just is actually kind of smart, but just stumbles into problematic things, like regularly. <laughs> so it's a fun, quick read. You get reintroduced to the same characters you love. I like series because it makes me not have to decide on what I'm going to read next or try books that I, you know, that are out of my comfort zone. So the longer the series, the better. <laughs> Though I do read lots of different authors because why wouldn't we? We have so much great stuff out there. Thanks for listening. Have a good day. You need more books. You need more books.